Hi there, Anna Cortez, author of the Playing Card Oracles, here to talk about the four card spread. This is my go-to spread. I use this spread almost exclusively for my readings and I talk about it in detail in my book, The Playing Card Oracles. Now the reason I use this spread so often and have for years and years is because it's so powerful and so potent and actually gives worlds of information in a deceptively small number of cards and a really boring looking spread. Is, is this not just about the most boring looking layout? Well, it's, it'll astound the people you read for and yourself. What I have here is four card positions. Each one corresponds naturally to one of the four suits. Now that being the case, it's best to use this spread with a deck that has four suits in it. So what I have at the top is the natural home of the diamond cards. So this position relates most naturally to cards of the diamond suit or the fire element. The second position is the natural home for the club suit or the air element. This third position is the natural home for heart cards or the water element. And this final or fourth position at the bottom relates most naturally to the spade cards or the earth element. Now, let's picture these elements as they appear in this tower of cards. Let's paint a little picture and I think it will quickly make sense to you why these positions are as they are in the four card spread. So let's picture the earth element at the bottom of this little canvas we're creating in our minds. So I've got the earth element, some trees, um, you know, rocks, or however you want to picture it. And then above that, I've got the water element. So maybe I have a little divot in my earth and I'm containing some water, which is the next highest element. Then Above my water, of course, I might have a beautiful sky, some clouds, some blue, etc. And that is corresponding to the ethereal element of air, which naturally rises above the earth and the water. And then at the very top, the most rarefied of my four elements is the fire element. Very naturally, at the top there, this is like the sun as it appears, even above the sky, even above the air, bringing in light and illuminating everything that is beneath it. So this is a very natural position for the elements to take. And in the playing card oracle system, we align everything with the natural order that we can observe in nature and in ourselves to really amplify the power of all your readings. And that's why I love this spread. So when I've got a four card layout like this, one of the first things I do is check to see if any of the cards fell within their natural position in the spread. Are any of these elements within their natural position? I've got diamonds or fire at the bottom. No, so that's not in its natural position. I've got diamonds again in the heart position. No, diamonds again in the club or air position. And an air card at the top in the natural home for fire. So. In this particular four card reading, I don't have any cards dignified by appearing in their natural position. Let's do another four card layout 
just to check the same thing. Let's say I'm doing another reading. Now, in this reading, I do have one card dignified by its position in the spread. Do you see what it is? Can you see these elements or suits here? I've got a club card at the top, the two of clubs, Jack of Hearts, Lady of Hearts, and the Seven of Clubs at the bottom. So in this instance, this heart card falls within its natural placement in the spread. It's a heart card in the heart position. And that simply dignifies this card. It strengthens the influence of this card. It's in its power position. And so when I'm interpreting this spread for my client, I'm going to give extra emphasis to the power that this card plays within this reading that makes this card very powerful. And of course, the more cards that you have in their dignified positions, the more powerful each card becomes. Only in rare instance have I had all four cards within their dignified position and this indicates such intense harmony and power within the person that you're reading for in relation to whatever they they asked about it's a real um it's a real compliment to the person that you're reading for so let's talk about another cool way to look at the four card spread that's very useful in your readings. Okay, I'm shuffling my 52 card deck here. I always use the 52 card deck, the regular playing cards for my readings. And I'm going to lay out another one now. Look, we have a dignified card at the top. That makes this 10 really influential in this reading. Ooh, and a club card in the club position. A diamond card in the heart position and another diamond card at the bottom. Now, another awesome way to picture your four card spread, aside from the landscape, is as a little person. Now, this is especially relevant in your reading. I've got a little doll on the table, a little holographic representation of the person that I'm reading for. Check this out. This card represents the head. This card is the throat. This card, very naturally, is the torso, right? I'm moving down my person. And then this card at the bottom is, you guessed it, the legs and the feet. Now, each one of these body positions not only illustrates what's going on in my client, but also corresponds very powerfully to the element associated with the positions we already talked about. So, for example, the head position being at the top is naturally associated with the element of fire. This is where we take in cosmic inspiration, cosmic download information. We take light in through the eyes, through the third eye. That's all at the very top of my little person. It vibrates with the frequency of the fire element. Next, I have the air position card and the throat where my air passes through my um, air passageways, my lungs, my speaking is all a part of this uh, position associated with the air element. It's how I communicate what I've received from up on high. It's how I turn this rarefied, um, powerful information into words and thoughts. This next position 
is as we talked about, and let's put a heart card there so we can see it clearly illustrated. Hold on a second. Okay, I've got a heart card in the heart position now. This is the torso of my little person. It's where the heart is in the person. It's also where the reproductive organs are. And it's where I feel the question. So questions related to how is a person feeling about what they asked. Questions related to reproductive issues. Am I going to conceive? Kind of. Am I going to have a child? All come here in the torso of my little person. It vibrates with the frequency of the water element. And then at the bottom of my little person, and I'll find a card that illustrates the power of this position, the spade element is the heaviest part. It relates to my feet and the earth. I don't go anywhere on the earth without my feet. It's my grounding mechanism. It's how I connect my body to the earth. All important, earth and spirit up at the top and everything in between. So together, these work to make um, all the parts of a person as they connect to these four elements. Okay, so now I can do a four-card layout representing a little person as a moment in time. This is a snapshot of the person I'm reading for at a certain moment, right? Now if I lay out additional four card spreads, I can get pictures of this person at different moments in time. Certainly, simply by intending that when I'm laying the cards out, I could do a present moment snapshot, a future moment, I could do a past moment, and the way I use it is the way I outline in the playing card oracles where I actually have the client cut into the deck and then I lay four card spreads out at the point that they cut because the four card or the 52 card deck is a natural calendar so I can actually um, look at specific moments in time depending on where the person cuts. And this is all just such fun. It's kept me busy for decades. And I hope that you are playing with your 52 card deck, checking out the playing card oracles. And thanks for watching.